Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the persistent widow. And Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people learn how to live a life that is pleasing to God. People love not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they love the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. And Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that he wanted to change. Now, one of the treasures in the Gospels is the collection of parables on the prayers that Jesus told. And today we'll take a look at two of these shorter parables that Jesus taught on how to pray more effectively. Luke recorded that Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not to lose heart. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. When our heart is not whatever, in whatever we are doing, we more are easily tempted to give up or to become discouraged. And one thing that the devil loves for us to do is to give up on talking to God. And so Jesus told these parables to help people not give up on the power and effectiveness of talking to God about our problems. Now, doctors around the world are alarmed at the rising rate of heart attacks among both men and women, but pastors are even more concerned about the alarming rise of the number of believers suffering the consequences of a spiritual heart attack. They have lost heart. Prayer no longer seems as important as it used to be. Even praise is diminished. And Jesus taught these parables to help believers recover from a spiritual heart attack. If you've had a spiritual heart attack, this message tonight is for you. These parables encourage us to keep talking to God about our problems, no matter how impossible they seem to be to solve. Jesus said, in a certain city, there was a judge who feared neither God nor respected man. Luke chapter 18 and verse 2. Immediately, we should understand that this judge is not a picture of who God is or how he responds when we talk to him. The Bible is very clear about how God views widows and fatherless children. From the Old Testament, you shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 22. And so the focus of this parable is to encourage widows to keep pleading their case. And of course, all of us to keep pleading our case before heaven. Jesus began the parable by saying there was a certain widow in that city uh, who kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my adversary, Luke chapter 18 and verse 3. All followers of Jesus face an adversary who wants everyone to give up on talking to God about our problems. And Jesus said, for a while the judge refused he afterwards said to himself, though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. Luke chapter 18, verse 4 and 5. Now this judge had his own reason for helping the widow, even though he did not care about her desperate condition. And Jesus makes it clear, Jesus makes a clear contrast between the heart of the judge and the heart of God towards this widow in need. <clears throat> Jesus said, will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Luke chapter 18 and verse 7. God will right the wrongs and injustices that are done to his followers. Not only will God right the wrongs done to widows, he will do so sooner than expected. Jesus asked this question, will God delay long over them? Luke chapter 18 and verse 7. 
It's good to remember the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said, justice delayed is not justice denied. And you may feel delayed, but God will come through for you at the right time. Say with me, my justice is coming to me sooner than I think. Say it, my justice is coming to me sooner than I think. In this parable, Jesus used classic Jewish reasoning to present this truth. It goes like this. If a lesser thing is certain, then a much more certain thing has greater chance of happening or it is a greater thing. So here are some examples found in the Bible using this kind of reasoning. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. <clears throat> or this one. How much more value is a man than a sheep? Matthew chapter 12, verse 12. Or this one. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 29. Jesus said that God acts quickly to help people who cry out to him. He said, I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Luke chapter 18 <clears throat> and verse 8. Say with me, God is in a hurry to help me. God is in a hurry to help me. He is indeed in a hurry to help you. Now, we pray not to wear God down, but to build ourselves up. The widow pleaded in desperation with little hope. Yet she is the example for us to follow in this parable. We can learn to pray with confidence and assurance in our heart that God loves us and is acting on our behalf right now, even if we can't see it. Immediately after saying these things, Jesus taught another parable on prayer. Luke wrote, Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Luke chapter 18 and verse 9. Jesus prepared his listeners for the parable he was about to tell them by making it clear that our attitude before we pray will determine the effectiveness of our prayer. Jesus said, two men went up into the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Luke chapter 18 and verse 10. And Jesus said, the starting point of the first man was that he trusted in himself, believing that he was righteous. By his own admission, he looked down on people whom he believed were less spiritual than he was. Listen to his shocking prayer. Standing by himself, the Pharisee prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes on all that I get. Luke chapter 18, verse 11 and 12. Notice that the Pharisee stood by himself. While prayers are often said in private to God, the Pharisee's reason for praying alone was that he did not believe that others were spiritual enough to pray with him. Self-righteous people usually compare themselves with people they think are worse sinners than they are, rather than comparing themselves with the holiness of God to whom they are praying. This man even names sins that he claims to have not committed. He was blinded from seeing his own shortcomings before God. He expressed no need for God to help him with failure. He boasted before God about his spirituality. And instead of focusing on God while talking to him, he was looking around to see who was watching him pray. It would not surprise me if Jesus repeated a prayer that someone listening to him had actually said. Then Jesus shifted everyone's attention to the second man who came to the temple to pray. 
He said, a tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Luke chapter 18 and verse 13. What a powerful prayer. Notice that the man did not feel qualified to be in the presence of other people while praying at the temple. Now, those people certainly did not want a tax collector anywhere near where they were talking to God. Now, the good news is that God comes to where people are when they call upon him. You might not feel qualified or even worthy to talk to God, but I assure you, if you cry out to him with an honest and an open heart, just like this tax collector, he will hear your prayer and come to you. Try saying with me what the tax collector said, Jesus, be merciful to me. Jesus, be merciful to me. Jesus is merciful. And he is looking for people who are hungry to experience his presence and power in their lives. Listen to what Jesus said about the effectiveness of the prayers said by these two men. I tell you, the tax collector went down to his house justified rather than the Pharisee. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Luke chapter 18 and verse 14. It's clear that Jesus is looking for honesty when we pray. Jesus hears and responds to the simplest prayers for help. Effective prayer happens when, humbly, hum, when we humble ourselves before God and ask him for mercy. If you've never humbled yourself before Jesus and asked him to forgive you for your sin, we invite you to do that right now. Thank Jesus for dying for you and your place on the cross. Ask Jesus to forgive all of your sins, except the payment Jesus made for you on the cross. Ask Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. If you just decided to follow Jesus, write to me, and I will share more information with you on how to grow as a new follower of Jesus. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.